Hi, this is 15 Minute Email Academy, and I'm Bob Serling. Today, my guest is Steve Gordon. Steve's the author of the book Unstoppable Referrals and the publisher of The Unstoppable CEO, the leadership journal for growing firms. He's also the editor of three business newsletters and has published hundreds of articles on marketing and selling high ticket products and services in high trust transactions. Steve also consults one-on-one -on -one with businesses across 30 different industries, including manufacturing, professional services, construction, and consulting, to design sales, marketing, and referral systems for high-ticket, high-trust products and services. And if all that isn't enough, Steve writes fantastic emails, and I'm pleased to have him here today to share one of his best emails with you. So welcome, Steve. Hey, great to be here, Bob. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Let me jump over, grab the email, and we'll get right into it. And here we go. All right. So can you see the email there on your screen, Steve? I can. I see it. Great. So let's start with uh, what the goal of this email is and the strategy that you used for achieving that goal. Sure. Um, well, the goal of the email is is really simple. This was for uh, someone that I had met just a few weeks before I actually wrote the email who was promoting a book, and she asked if I would help her promote the book. And so the, the goal was to get uh, folks who were on our email list to click through and, and uh, take up her offer for a free book. Great. And what was the strategy you used for writing the email? So she has a process, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the subject here, but her process is uh, a way to get 10,000 Facebook fans for your Facebook page in three days. And, okay. and so the strategy really is to show a case study. And uh, I went through her process, and so I created essentially a case study out of, uh, out of that and, and uh, had some results to show, and so that's what we're demonstrating through the email. Great, and I just want to emphasize that it's, it is a case study uh, and a very strong one, but in addition to that, you've combined a lot, a lot of personaliz personalization and a very authentic take on what you did to it, and it's a really powerful email. So, all right, let's talk then uh, about the subject line, which reads the real story of how I added 15,971 Facebook followers in three days. Huge promise. Um, what was the, um, you know, the, the strategy or the technique behind that subject line? Well, there are a couple of things going on. First, understanding that this email is sitting in somebody's inbox, surrounded by other marketing emails that are making big claims. And, uh, and so anytime we're in that environment. I always want to be as specific as I can. So we use the actual numbers here. Um, and I, I knew that we were going to have to use some curiosity to get people to open this email with all of the other, you know, noise that's around it. And so um, by starting off with the real story of, I felt like that created some curiosity, like, okay, there's a result here. But if I open this email, I'm going to find out kind of the, the behind the scenes of how this happened. Okay, great. Now, the other thing it does as well, though, is it sets up a really big claim that a lot of people may have a little question about. So right in the opening block, which is number two here, you get right into that and you deal with it right away. Can you talk about that a little more? Yeah, the first thing we did, I mean, because it's a kind of an unbelievable claim. And um, so the first thing that, that I'm probably pretty skeptical of what we've said in the subject line and reassure them that no, that it's the real deal. And, uh, you know, and, and so that's what that line was all about. Okay, great. And then it, it continues down there and you begin to tell the story uh, and you set the stage in this block for the case study with, with kind of your backstory. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how personal it is? Yeah, so throughout this entire thing, I mean, the mistake that I see make with with a lot of emails that are trying to to create action is, um, you know, you can be really direct and sometimes that works, but I always find if I can get somebody involved 
in a story if, if I can bring them along a little bit um, and give them an experience all the way through, then it really helps. And so at the beginning here, I gave them a little bit of backstory, you know, where, where I met Kim Walsh Phillips, who is the, the person whose book that we're promoting and, uh, and, and kind of let them have a little fun with it. You know, we met at a mastermind event. It was in Chicago. We went on a pizza tour the night before all of this took place. So we're, we're kind of painting a picture for somebody to let them get into this scene that we're in. Yeah, and it's a very engaging picture throughout the email, and, and we'll see that as we go along. So in block three, you do something really interesting. I'm going to just scroll down a little bit so that's showing real clearly. But you get right into the link very early into the email. Um, a lot of people don't do that. Can you talk about doing that and the advantage of it? I always find that I get better results when I do it. Um, you know, I think especially in a longer email like this, if you can give someone the ability to, to click, because you're going to have people that are scanning through, they're going to see the little blue link text in their, their email, often on their phone, and you'll, just, you'll get people that will just want to click right away. And so you have to, I think, do it a little bit with you know, some art. So here I'm, I'm stating what the claim is that, that – that Kim Walsh Phillips in this case was at this mastermind and she gave a presentation and the presentation was about getting, you know, 10,000 Facebook fans in three days, which is the offer, but it's the big claim. So it, that was just a really good place to be able to put that link early in the email because, you know, we're talking there about this, uh, this claim that she's making. But again, it's kind of wrapped in, in that sentence. Right. So it's not overt. Right. And it's a great point in a longer email to have a link uh, up near the beginning. And a lot of people may just see that state and say, hey, that's enough for me. I want to see what this is and jump in. So it, you know, it's really a being of service to the reader too. If this is all you need and you want to go from here, then I'm not going to force you to go through the rest of it. Here you go. So that, that's a, a great way to do it. Um, now, in, in this block too, number three, you start uh, by specifically stating uh, a really impressive benefit, and you have the link, um, but then you kind of go into the beginning of your story as well um, to kind of set up the case study. So, I mean, I don't really have a question. It's just kind of a comment. I like how you give some authentic uh, experience, then a link, and then more authentic experience, and then as we get down to block four here, but the point I want to emphasize is the authentic experience is really the emphasis of this email uh, as much as the results. So in this, email, uh, in this block number four, this is where you actually start to present the case study of what you experienced, and you do it in a very personal way. So can you talk a little bit more about that and, and also how well that works? Yeah, I, I absolutely can. And I think just to your your previous point, you know, we were dealing with an offer here that that really is over the top, and we kind of had to work within the confines of that because that's the her the title of her book was you know it's an over the top promise, yeah. and you know after I I wrote this, but just in the last week or so, I was reading an article by Perry Marshall, where we talked about the value of understatement, <laughs> you know, and like. And so throughout this, and, and we try and do this a lot, if we've got something that's kind of overstated, we like to immediately bring in the reasons to be skeptical, the reasons to disbelieve, because I think it, it grounds the whole thing. Like, yeah, we've got this big thing, but then you're telling them, well, okay, maybe you shouldn't believe, and, and, and you kind of reconnect with them. And, um, and, and then going into this story, really, I wanted to give the – the reader, the experience, the real experience. All of this happened. I mean, it's all, all true. Um, and I wanted them to be there with me. So the way that, that it came together was Kim gave a presentation um, at a, a mastermind event in the afternoon. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical because I'd heard these kind of promises before, just like the reader had. And, uh, you know, I said to myself, you know, what? when I get back to the room that night, I'm going to actually see if I can do replicate what she's taught. And, and I explain all of that to the reader in this. And so they're sitting there with me. I, I talk about, I opened up the laptop at 1138 PM, yeah. you know, and, and, uh, and, 
you know, I, I closed the, the lid at 1244 AM. So it was 66 minutes, it literally was 66 minutes uh, that it took to do the, the things that she'd outlined. So the reader is seeing now they're getting a demonstration, which in, in so much of, of, what we do online is it's difficult to do a demonstration, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think it's really, really powerful. And so sometimes you can do that with words. Yeah. And you did it really well because when I read it, I really felt like I was in the room there with you and, and had the pizza hangover. And <laughs> yeah. Had, had the three pounds of pizza, right? Right. So then the end of this block, after you go through all of that and, and talk and step through the results, you show, the number of likes on in a small graphic and that's great too because that also kind of cements it and then block number five is really interesting because after you've made a huge promise and you have verified it and stepped through it you then uh, have uh, you, you what you do is you expose a potential limitation with the process which is again very authentic so can uh, you talk about the purpose of doing that? Yeah, well, so the, again, all the way through here, we want to answer the questions that, that the reader is going to have. And so they may go, okay, well, great. You've generated all these Facebook fans, but what good is that? It's not sales. It's not money in the bank. Okay, fine. So we want to, uh, we want to hit that head on. And I think so many people run away from the weaknesses in, in whatever it is that they're offering and we've always found that if you just deal with them head on and here we said, okay, yeah, it's not sales for sure, but it, you know, we're, we're now bringing them back to what the benefit is. There's big social proof. Um, we've seen a spike in our web traffic from Facebook. And, and so we bring them back to where the real benefit lies. Yeah, that's great. All right. Then in, in block number six, your issue, your call to action and tell the reader what you want them to do. And you repeat it twice. So uh, can you talk about the purpose of this type of repetition? Yeah, so here the, the first link is, is really just the title of the book that we're promoting. Mm -hmm. And so the offer is to get Kim's book for free. She was giving it away, you know, for a period of time when this email went out. And, um, and I just, I like to have more links in there. I think it gives the, the reader you know, more of an opportunity to click on something. And so it just seemed really like a great place to link uh, right there to have that, um, you know, that title linked. And then below that, we go two, two lines down from that. And, and then we give kind of the direct call to action, do this, click here. And I think it's always important to have that in there as well and be very, very specific with what you want the reader to yeah, do. Yeah. So the first one's indirect and the second one is very direct, do this which is great. All right, yes. so then in block seven, another really interesting block, you close with a personal invitation to get in touch with you. And uh, so talk a little bit about that. Why did you close it this way? Well, again, we've taken, we've taken the reader all the way through this journey. Like they've been with us. They were with me in the hotel room as I was implementing this. They were with me in the mastermind group as all of the, the other members were gathered around, you know, so they got to feel that excitement. And now we're telling them to go start their journey. But I don't want them to feel like they're doing that alone, like I'm sending them off. So this last little line is just to say, okay, you're going to go start this journey. You're going to go get the book, but I'm there with you. We're going to continue this journey that we just came through together. And that's really the purpose of that line. That's great. Well, that's a great way to wrap it up. All right, so let me get off the screen and come back. Here we are again live. And uh, let me just finish by asking you, um, this is such a great example. I know people are going to want to know how to find out more about you and what you do, so why don't you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. So we help um, businesses who, uh, who sell business to business, um, primarily in, in service industries. And uh, we help them create this kind of marketing and uh, they can find out more about us and how we do that at unstoppableceo.net. Fantastic. All right. Well, Steve, um, I have to tell you, I learned a tremendous amount from this email. It's, I mean, it's, it's an email that's enjoyable to read and teaches a great lesson at the same time. And that's a tough thing to do all in a short space and you did a great job um, and so I really appreciate it share you sharing it with us today 
Well, I'm happy to. It actually means a, a ton. As I shared with you uh, in an earlier conversation, I started my copywriting journey with uh, one of your information products. And so, uh, really great to be here. It's quite an honor. Thank and you. Yet, and yet you succeeded despite that. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I really appreciate that compliment. That's great. Okay, so thanks again.